man, you are, you are, you have about six missions going at all times in your life. You're you got a, you're, you're a driven guy, a crusader in a whole bunch of different areas at one time. So this is perfect. What's the driving force to do a book called Mission Possible? Encouragement, encouragement, and people's worth, their value, and their purpose in life. And why I wanted to write Mission Possible was because I wanted to encourage people. One, when you when you know you have a mission, means you know you have purpose. And two, when you know it's possible, you have encouragement for endurance and for stamina in your race. And I want to encourage people that it's not impossible to have a life that counts. Mm -hmm. we, get to, we get to have a life that truly counts. God has made that possible. I believe he's given every single one of us purpose. He's given every single one of us a mission. A mission means a task or a job someone is given to do. And actually the origin of the world means to sin. And I believe every single one of us has been sent here for a mission, for a purpose, for a plan. And that is possible. Possible means to be able. That mission, we are able to accomplish that mission to truly make our life count. And mm -hmm. you know, so many people are going to say, well, you know what? I, I think what I need to really run after is money, fame, and power status and all these other things. And I'm here to say you could have all those things yeah. and you could still be empty and not really have anything, right? Yeah, be careful and if you run after them. You might catch them. You might catch them. But you know what? If you run after purpose and worth and value and meaning, you yeah, might catch them too. You might mm -hmm. catch them too. And, and I believe yeah. when you do that, you're going to truly have a life that counts. Yeah. So what I think is interesting is like what you just contrasted right there right of like what the world what you feel like would fill you up you know That's right power fame money all of these things right it's going to make me feel better versus going after almost this not tangible side of life yeah. of value purpose Serving. having something that you is so much deeper so talk about but, that contrasting because you've kind of but that's god's economy right is is totally. we actually think what when we give, we have less. That's not true. When we give, we actually have more in God's economy. And what's crazy is that science and studies actually back that up. We talk about one study from the University of Miami. I know they're Miami, so it's hard to mention them, but we can. <laughs> you have that nasty little orange tea orange. thing over there, whatever. Or, we'll we'll, we'll let, it, Vol, let it go. It's fine. That's it, what grace is for, hard. guys. Honestly, yeah. it's what grace is totally fine. Grace, is, grace is for SEC yeah, football That's exactly in right. I know. But, but we talk about the, this study, and it's fascinating because th th this um, – this, these groups write down one thing every day they're grateful for, and then other groups write down things that they don't like, and then there's different groups in here, and the group that would write down, you think it's nothing, right? One day, write down, or every day, write down one thing you're grateful for. It had a, a, um, a biochemical positive change in their life, in their body, from the inside out, just by writing down one thing they're grateful for. So gratitude changes your life. But also yeah. there's another study about a helper's eye. When you choose to actually serve and give selflessly to other people, you also have a biochemical positive mm -hmm. reaction mm -hmm. from the inside out. And it's crazy. Wait a second. To actually do these things, to choose to be grateful, to choose to help, not only do I have an emotional response, but I actually have a chemical response for the better. That's crazy. And you live longer. And you have a higher <laughs> quality of life in the process. I no mean, doubt. Oh, yeah. Rachel's got a gratitude journal that we put out, right? Do I? The contentment journal. Contentment journal. But gratitude's right. one of the steps to contentment because it is. It's like when you're able to have peace with where you're at, where That's God's right. put you. I'm like, there's there's a level of power there that that brings. There's and no gratitude doubt. is that first step. And I feel like one of the things that... Um, that we're fighting right now, and we we're talking about it before the show right now, is comparison. And why would you, wh literally another mm -hmm. study com came out that said 12% of our daily thoughts are spent on some form of comparison. When you are spending your life comparing yourself against other people, what you're really saying is, God, I'm not happy, I'm not grateful, I'm not content of where you put me, and I need to be like somebody else. Listen, if God wanted you to be like someone else, he would have made you like somebody else, but he didn't. He created you with a, a design and with mm -hmm. a plan for to be exactly who you are and to make the most out of what he has given you. You were created in love, by love, and for love, and he has a great plan and purpose for your life. You have a mission and that mission is possible. But before you can answer that mission, you have to know there is a mission. You have to know that I'm here on purpose. And when you know that you're here on purpose, I don't have to spend my whole life wishing I was somebody else because the God of this universe who is sovereign in control of all of it, in his design and in his wisdom and in his love for us, he made me who I am mm -hmm. for a reason. And he didn't make a mistake and he didn't make a mistake on you. Okay, so for someone out there that's listening... And they're like, this is great, Tim. Absolutely. Gosh, I want that. I'm, I'm longing for that. Everything you're saying, 
like, yes, like how does someone start when someone does feel like that they're in this cycle of comparison so, or the cycle of so good. hopelessness? Yes. What's the thing to be like, okay, how do I connect to my God-given design? How do I well, connect to my God-given design? That's such a good purpose? question. And it's one of the things that we really try to focus on here is we talk about the principles kind of from a very, you know, 30,000 foot view, but then we also want to get into the practical of the every single day. Yeah. And a lot of people come and say, Timmy, how do I know what my mission, what my calling, my purpose is? And I'll first say, I don't know exactly, but have your eyes ever been open to a need, to a hurting person, to um, a a church that's doing something too cool, to a nonprofit that you feel um, really strongly towards? And have your, has your heart ever felt compassion to want to step up and do something for that hurting person or that person in the hospital or that person in the old folks home or that person on the side of the street? If so, that's probably God saying, Hey, I want you to go meet that need. Mm -hmm. And when you step out with that little bit of courage, with that little bit of faithfulness, with that little bit of, of boldness, and you do that a lot of times you don't know the the end road the end the 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 destination but when you say yes I feel like God shows you as you continue to grow and in you for me as when I was 15 years old and I was in the jungles of the Philippines and I met a boy who was born with his feet on backwards and because of that he was viewed as cursed as insignificant as less than and he was a throwaway but God was like he's not a throwaway to Mm -hmm. me and he better not be a throwaway to you and because of that you know I I knew that was my calling and we've I you know and I know till that my my last breath that that's gonna be my calling is fighting for every single boy or girl around the world like him yeah. And Chill being cheap. obedient in the small things. That's right, being in the obedient. small things. There is this strange dance we have that mixes into this message. Um, and around here, we always quote St. Ambrose, uh, pray like it all depends on God. Work, yes. work like it all depends, depends on, on you. you. That's right. And, and so sometimes I meet people of faith who uh, need to get off their tail yes. and go do something. Yes. And sometimes I meet people of faith who are a little bit too dependent on their own power. Correct. And they missed out on they missed out on exponential yes because they didn't do both yeah you've got to do the planting it was so that you're going to reap what you sow you've got to do the work you've got to do the discipline no discipline seems pleasant at the time but it yields a harvest of righteousness mm-hmm. you've got to do those things and then god comes along and joins if you keep your arms open that's right, right. I-, I was literally listening to a sermon on sunday and he he brought up both of those and then he said do both do both, right? We need to have faith that that God is is sovereign and God is in control, and we need to have faith knowing that that you know we got to do what, what we're called to do, but He's going to do what He wants to do, and He's in control of all of it. But we also are called co-laborers for a reason, co-workers. And also, we know that He's given us a mission, a job, a responsibility. But are we truly going after it like it depends on us? And honestly, I, that's one of the reasons why my dad is my biggest hero because his entire adult life, he has truly gone after it. And I got to see all these other people in the church and they would talk about it and they would raise their hand. And it was all this cool stuff. But I was like, but you don't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. But, but man, I just, ne- I wanted to be like my dad because he was all about it. Mm-hmm. He was, he was mm-hmm. all about it. His whole entire adult life, I saw him loving people that could literally not do anything for him. Yeah. You see, I didn't want to be that person that it, it, I would I would talk about God's love for humanity. But you know what? When when we look at at Scripture and we look at God's love, which is agape, the four types of love in the Greek, and and agape being most admirable, you know, and the best definition I've ever heard of it was to choose the best interest for another person and act on their behalf. But you know what's in the Bible more than agape is agapao, because mm. agape is the noun. Agapao is the verb. It's in the Bible more than agape. Why? Yeah. Because it's one thing to know about God's love. It's a whole nother thing to go out there and show God's love, to choose the best interest for humanity and act on their behalf. And you know what? I think there's going to be a lot of people one day that they're going to know that, that right now they know about God's love, but man, they didn't choose to go act because I think the most selfish thing that you can do is once you, you have been rescued is you know about what God sent his son Jesus to do and you believe that it, what he did on the cross and you believe it counted for you. And my pastor always says, once you've been rescued, you're on the rescue team. Yeah. Go be on the rescue team. Go bring that, that mission. Go bring that message. Go bring that opportunity to every single person around the world because the most selfish thing you can do is once you know that, mm. to hold on to it, to not bring and show that love to the world. And I don't want to be someone that, that, that 
that knowledge stops with me. I want I want to be a I, I want to be a verb. Listen, I was homeschooled, but I know the difference between a noun and a verb. All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I want I want to show. It might be why you know the difference. Yeah. Oh, oh, you went to Tennessee. We can explain it in a oh, little bit. Okay. Oh. So, oh. But, but honestly, you know. I, yeah. I believe every day we share the gospel, but every now and then we use words. Like, okay, so, and, and when so those two match, now I think you have great impact. You need yeah. to keep in mind, Florida's a really good school. It is. And, and I, I went to Tennessee, and there's a lot of people that went to Florida that work for me. <laughs> it's cool just keep it up uh, honestly, just keep it up no let, let's let's <laughs> let, let's talk about the glory days and you can talk about the early 90s okay you know it's cool that is true i, that I is remember truth. when to celebrate i had to look back 30 years no <laughs> it's a hard reality oh, oh, it's, tim it's they, a hard they reality just keep coming it's so true, no it's cool. awesome let's go back and celebrate peyton and t martin <laughs> and it's, like, it's say, cool you know when, when someone, 90 96 and 7 were awesome when, years huh so. Half the stadium is a jersey. That's that's 35 years old. You're like that's sad. Yeah, it's okay. It's true. It's, though. Okay. it's being it's a ball okay. fan. It's we're okay. de- we're dedicated. We're, we're I, I was I was talking about the academics. I know. Well, you, you turn football. The academics. Uh, I love good. it. Honestly, I uh, want Tennessee to be good. I oh, genuinely do. Oh, that's nice do. of you, Tim. I'm, I'm, I'm being. So I'm, 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 I'm honestly. You're I'm just being the nicest guy. You're so One, because nice. I love the SEC, but two, we freaking need them to be good again. Like, come on. And they're getting back. And at least this year, they're exciting with their offense. Hello, hello gunslinger. Yeah. yeah. So one, every year. one of the greatest questions you can ask is, "Does my life change other people's lives for the better?" That's yes. one of the statements towards the end of the book, and. Uh, one of my best friends, pastor that's that's graduated, he's gone on to be with the Lord, used to say, if it's not helpful, if it doesn't promote healing and it doesn't spread hope, why are you doing it? Yeah. And so you get to the end and go, you know, did I leave an impact? Did that's I leave right. a mark? That's right. And, and that's how you know if you were on mission. That's right. And, and you know, I believe that uh, one of the greatest forms of tragedy is to be successful in all the things that don't matter. And I think there's going to be a, a lot of people one day that are going to look back and they're going to say, you know what, I was successful in all of these things, but none of them matter. And man, I just don't want to say that or feel that or know that about my life. Is you know, I've been fortunate in a few areas to be a, a little bit successful, man. But success is doesn't matter. But I do think that every single person that has been blessed to have a little bit of success, I believe that we can turn that into significance because I believe success is about us, but significance is about other people. Mm-hmm. And I want to encourage all those people that are listening right now and you've been blessed with with success. You have the chance to turn that into significance by looking outward, by looking at people that need you, that need that help. And you can make a difference in their life because what are you going to think one day? Oh my gosh, what are you going to brag about in your deathbed? Look at all the success I had. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate to talk to a lot of people on their deathbed, whether that's been in hospitals, it's been in death row, it's been in so many different places, in so many different countries. And very rarely do you ever hear someone talk about an accomplishment. But you do hear them talk about meaning Mm -hmm. and purpose. Or you hear them say, I wish I would have done more meaning purpose significance things that actually really mattered yep that's exactly right yeah you don't uh get to the end of the end of the thing and somebody worry about what car they're driving it doesn't it doesn't come up no now, but he, I, he with the most stories when he dies is dead that's I mean, right you know. but but i will say this I'll, I'll tell you honestly so many times in my life I, I i will say that i have gotten caught up in that I think, man, I, I've, so many times I've gotten caught up. I thought, man, but if we can win this championship, man, but if we can beat Tennessee again, man, but, but, but if we can win the SEC, man, but if we can win this championship, man, but, but if, we can, if I can prove the doubters wrong and, and be a first-round draft pick, if we can prove them wrong and get to the playoffs, you know, and, and those aren't bad things, but too many times in my life they were everything. And, and God had to say, no, 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 that's not everything. That's a game. And, and it's okay. I know you love it. That's a good thing. I put you here for that. Yeah. But but remember, I didn't put you here for a game. You know, I, I remember I was uh, I just won the, the Heisman Trophy. And then a few weeks later, I was in Thailand. I got a chance to do some cool things. And I saw a boy that was starving on the side of, uh, of this feeding center that was squatting in this corner mm-hmm. of a ditch. And he was wearing a, an orange and blue number 15 Tim Tebow jersey. And I just started weeping because oh God. I knew God was pricking my mm-hmm. heart saying, you think that you're cool or you think that you matter because you just won this trophy and people are celebrating you. Who's celebrating that boy? You see, I died just as much for that boy as mm-hmm. I died for you. And you know what? A game's not going to do anything for that boy, but you can. Mm-hmm. So don't remember why you, 
don't forget why you're here. Mm. Don't forget why I died. I didn't die for a game. I died for humanity. I died for that boy. I want you to love that boy. Amen. Yeah, and that's so much too of like, even here on this show when we just talk about money, right? Like that's like the big arc of it. And it's like, you know, getting people in this place to be free and to have the margin, the ability to go and give, right? Not that we're mad at stuff, right? So whether it's winning a football game or driving a nice car, whatever, like all that's not bad. It's not bad. But but it's the thing that you're attaching your hope and your joy to. That's exactly right. So I think that's that's awesome. The new book is Mission Possible. Go create a life that counts with our friend Tim Tebow. Thanks for coming by, my brother. Thank you, guys. Always I appreciate good to time, y'all spend so time much. With you. Thank you. I'm so grateful for y'all. You too, brother.